Hooray! Now that you've finished all the exercises, it's time to put everything together into a working game. Because we've already created the onKey handler called player and the stop when handler called game ends, huh? All we have to do is to take the two functions you just designed, remove invaders and remove bullets, and incorporate them into the onTick handler we already have. So let's go modify the tick function. Here's a good time to tell you about one of the handy features of Dr. Racket. If you're looking for a particular definition of a function you've already defined, you could go under this menu near the top left corner, which will show you everything that's been defined. So if I'm looking to find tick, I could just choose that and I'm brought to the location of this tick definition right away. So we need to add the removal of invaders and the bullet to the tick function. As usual, let's begin by writing an example of what additional feature we want. We'll have to come up with an example world where a invader has just been hit by a bullet and so both the invader and the bullet should be removed. I'm going to repeat the example that I used in the previous video. So that's where we have a list of three posits for the list of invaders. P2 is, by the way, 150, 100. So that's the one that we're going to design a bullet to hit. We're going to arbitrarily put the player at the horizontal location 50. That's not going to be changed by the tick. And then we're going to put the bullet at uh, 151, 101, right next to P2. And the result of time passing, starting with that world, should be one where P2 is gone, leaving us with just P1 and this other arbitrary posin, the player should stay the same, and the bullet should go away along with the invader. Now, if I run this program, this test should fail because we haven't implemented the feature yet. And it's good to first confirm that the test fails. Now let's implement the feature. We're gonna change the tick function using the remove functions that y'all just designed. The invaders, after being moved, needs to be checked for collision with a bullet. So we're going to use the remove invaders function, and it needs to know not just the invaders to use, but also the bullet to use. We're going to use the moved bullet, which is this one. That should take care of updating the invaders to remove some of them. Similarly, in order to update the bullet, we're going to use the remove bullet function. And that also needs to know not just the bullet, but also the invaders. And again, we're going to use the updated list of invaders and use that as an input to remove bullet. This should do the trick. Game's on. I might win this game, finally! Yes! Whew! Well, well, but the test failed. What happened here? Oh, right. This is because the test we wrote is actually incorrect. You see, when P1 is updated, it should not stay at P1. It didn't go away, so it should become not make possum one, two, but make possum one, three, it's supposed to move down. And similarly, make possum three, four should become make possum three, five. This is an error in the test. But I'm glad that the most important part of the intention behind our writing this test is achieved, which is that P2 is gone. Let's try again. Hopefully now all the tests will pass. But first, Oh, 
okay, this is not an easy game. Maybe it can be made easier by changing some of the uh, parameters that you all chose, like how fast a player moves or how fast a bullet moves and so on. Um, but when you do that, remember to update the test to reflect your intentions. As you can see, now all our tests pass. Enjoy the game.